All right, so it is the month of April. We've got the numbers fresh off the books. What does the market look like as we head into the prime of the spring market season here in Maine? Stick around, we're gonna get into that today. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is your realtor, Nick Isgro with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. Now, as I said at the beginning, we've got the fresh numbers off the books. We got all the March data that has been pushed through the system so we can break down the numbers today and really get into the nitty gritty of what does the market look like here in Central Maine as we head into the robust part of the spring real estate market. Now, whether you're a buyer or a seller, you are gonna wanna stick around to the end, particularly in some of these late stats that we're gonna go over here because it's gonna make a difference to how you approach things, how you approach your contracts, whether you're a buyer putting in a contract in a competitive bid process, or whether you're a seller trying to price your home appropriately. Remember, as we talked about with pricing strategies, all of these numbers go into what's going on and how you price your home. It's not just what is closed next door and that's the price that we go by. Now, before we get into any of that, if you are new to the channel, I wanna welcome you here. On this channel, we go over all things real estate here in the state of Maine, particularly in the central Maine market. If that is of interest to you and adds value to your process in the buying and selling of homes here in central Maine, please go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and knock that little alarm bell and you'll be notified every time we put out new content. All right, now I'm gonna mix things up a little bit here because I've got a little more data to work with. So just stick with me as we go through all of this because it's gonna paint a really great picture as we go through. I'm gonna start off today, particularly with the sold listings. So how many listings actually sold here in Kennebec County during the month of March? Numbers coming up, 104 listings sold. So definitely an uptick from last month. No surprise there, headed up a little bit from last month, but really if we look at a year ago, it was 124 listings. So uh, not quite as many as we sold in March of 2021, but definitely a good trend, we're moving up. So as you can see, homes are definitely still moving. The trend is moving up. That's something that we expect as we move into the spring market. And I wanna bring in a new statistic that I haven't really got into here, and that is pended listings. Um, because pended listings are gonna make a difference because when we talk about sold, those are homes that may have gone under contract and into escrow the month before oftentimes, and those are closed sales for the month. Well, really, if the home has been pended, it's really in that sale process. It's not necessarily an active listing on the market. So bringing this number in is gonna be important when we get to how many new listings came on during the month. So let's get right into the pended listings during the month of March. So pended listings during the month of March, 145 listings. Now that's up almost 40 more pended listings than the month before that we saw in February. No surprise, again, headed into spring and really just below the 153 mark that we were were the March before. So the activity that we can see as far as homes that were going into escrow during the month, not necessarily closed sales, was really comparable to what we saw exactly a year ago. And that could be a good sign of where we're headed this spring um, because the activity level of what happened during the month of March was really very similar to what we saw the year before. Indicative, by the way, that it's going to be a robust, hot seller's market continuing again this year. We've said that repeatedly on this channel, but the numbers are always great because it's always great when we get confirmation uh, because sometimes we might have to pivot. We might have to change directions on the advice we're giving, but for today, no, looks like we're right on target. So let's take a look. So we saw 104 sold listings, 145 pended listings. So uh, how many new listings have we had? That's, that's you know, over 250 listings really off the market potentially during the month. How many did we add to replace that inventory? 167 new listings. So definitely not as many as went in the contract. So that's definitely gonna put a squeeze on the overall active inventory as we end the month. But look at, look at last year, 165 listings were added during the month of March. So again, just like pended listings, almost identical to the March before. And the really good news, huge jump, about 60 new listings over the month before that we saw in February. So a nice uptick, that's what we've been hoping for, that's what we've been waiting for, is those new active listings coming to market and it definitely happened during the month of March. The hope is, obviously, especially for you buyers out there uh, who have been having a hard time finding the right home for you, is 
it looks like the sellers are doing what we wanted them to do, which is, you know, jump off the cliff, get yourself into the market. And if you are a seller, that's great advice because right now the pricing really can't be beat. The, the appreciation has happened. There's still a squeeze on inventory. Prices are on the uptick. So great time to sell. If you're a buyer, it's great news because it means that sellers are actually jumping in and putting their homes in the market. So we should see that trend continue over the next several months, adding more available inventory for the buy side. So lots of listings sold, lots of listing pended, definitely more new listings than last month. What did that do to the overall active inventory? Well, 113 listings. So really last month we ended at about 110 active listings. Total active inventory, as you can see, pretty much the same as it was last month. There was no major increase in the availability of homes that are on the market. Cause you can see they're going on, there's more coming on, but they're being sold and going under contract very quickly. So that inventory just isn't lasting. It's not sticking to build on that number. You know, hopefully we'll see more of that as more and more sellers come into the market. We can see the overall numbers because this is a number that is very different from last year. Last year we had over 160 active listings headed into the month of April. We're just not there this year. So if we're having the same sale activity, some new listing activity, but the overall total listings um, coming onto the market are really staying stagnant. So like to see that number increase over the next couple of months. And if you're a seller out there, don't worry. I can promise you, you could double or triple the inventory right now. It's really not gonna have a huge impact on the pricing. We're gonna get into some of those numbers now to show you why. We talked about this last week in the video about supply and demand with a shortage of over five and a half million homes that we need on the market to meet the buyer demand we're just not anywhere close. So would love to see more sellers coming onto the market. And I can tell you, I think they are over the next couple of months. Um, I've been working with multiple sellers, people getting ready. We've been doing a lot of comps. I know I'm not the only realtor in the market who's out doing this activity. So I'd imagine that as we move in through April into May, that number is gonna come up a little bit. So when I said to the sellers that if we increase the inventory, it's probably not gonna have a huge dramatic effect on the pricing. Well, why is that? Well, let's talk about the months of supply on the market. So months of supply, and I actually did a manual calculation because I wanted to smooth out the numbers here on this. So with the months of supply, typically you can take your total available homes in the market, the active listings, divide by the number of homes that were sold in the last month and then in that same time period, and you're going to get that number. Well, if we add in the pending, because remember, Pending homes really are not available homes. So yes, they can fall through, but if they fall through, that's gonna go back into the active category. But while they are pending, it is not really an active listing. It's not there. So I consider the pending and the sold together. How much supply do we have on the market? 0.67 months of supply on the market. So you see, we, we don't even have one month worth of supply on the market. And the numbers just prove that. As they're coming on, we're adding more new listings. They're flying off. We're getting more homes sold. They're either being sold or they're going under contract. So the overall active listings aren't increasing as that number stays stagnant. We're remaining under a month of supply. You know, six months of supply, by the way, would be a more normalized market. That would be considered a balanced market where between sellers and buyers, we would consider there to be a balance less than one month. So that's why I'm saying to you sellers out there, you could double or triple the inventory right now. It's really not going to have a massive impact on the price because we're just not there. That's still an incredibly strong seller's market when, uh, you know, to triple the amount, that'd be like, oh great, we have a month and a half of supply on the market. So really strong seller's market continuing into the summer. I don't see this loosening up that much, even as sellers jump in for the spring market. So I'm saying homes are moving faster. What happened? Uh, you know, one of the numbers we look at every month is average days on market. Uh, looking at this month's number, remember we've been in the 40s, basically on average for a while now. 
uh, that we've been in the 40s as far as 40 some odd days that homes are on average sitting on the market before they go into escrow. Uh, this month we're down to 32 days. So you can see in one month we wiped 10 days off the market. Wouldn't be surprised as we head through this month if that picks up a little bit and we get back more in the under 30, high 20s as far as the average days on market. So this will be an interesting thing to watch. This really isn't indicative of price, by the way, because even uh, when we were a few months ago looking at you know 30, 40 some odd days on the market, people were really still pricing strong and they were essentially getting what they were asking for. And that's gonna bring us over to the last number I wanna get into today, which is the list to price ratio. So that is uh, how much of the listing price did the home sell for? So you have a home for $100,000, it sells for $100,000, that ratio is 100%. So you can take it from there and do the numbers and see if it's plus or minus there. So, uh, and there's two of these now, and I'm gonna expand this a little bit because normally I'm just taking the sale to price ratio, but I wanna show you an interesting number which is sale to original list price ratio because that does tell us that pricing may have gotten a little stronger than it should have for a few months. I think we're snapped back now, but let's go over both of these numbers. Sale to price ratio this month, about 101%. So we're back a little bit over the asking price. That means people are offering about 1% more than what the asking price is on the market. And you can see if we look back on this trend line, it's really been about 100% of the asking price. So people are listing their homes, they're essentially getting exactly what they're asking for, give or take a tiny little bit, but it's averaging right around that 100% mark. But let's go to the sale to original list price ratio, and you're gonna see a difference here. This month was 99%, uh, so just a slightly under 100%, but if we start going back a few months, you can see it goes into the high uh, 90%, but there's a time about four or five months ago where you see it was really around 96, 97% on the sale to original list price ratio, and what that shows you is that as things did slow down a little bit late last fall, the prices did soften a little bit. People were getting deals because what was happening is there were price reductions occurring on those homes. So when they finally sold, it looked like it was 100% of the list price, but it was 100% of the list price after the price reduction from the original list price. But looks like we're balancing out now because really 99 to 100% this last month, uh, what we're seeing is those values are coming right back up. We see the swings in the market. If you're a realtor out there or if you're a buyer out there, you definitely feel this. Nice house comes on the market you're one of like, you know, 10 to 15 offers sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And I think as much as the pricing is actually increasing on homes right now, we're not seeing the price reductions because again, that overall inventory has remained squeezed, but now more and more buyers are coming into the market. Only time is gonna tell about how extreme that appreciation is. We've talked about this all the time, you know, Goldman Sachs and Zillow think we're gonna have double digit appreciation again this year. Um, I think it might be a little bit more modest, you know, seven or 8%. Only time is gonna tell. We're gonna track this over the next few months. We always will bring you those numbers so that you are the best prepared buyer or seller on the market so you know how to list your home at the right price or you know how to put the right offer in on whatever home that you're looking at. All right, guys, so that's it. I know we covered a lot. This is a little bit longer than my normal market update today, but I wanna make sure I'm breaking down the numbers and having a really genuine discussion of what these numbers might mean to you of what's going on in the market. Because with a market like this, it's just so crazy to keep up with it, but but fortunately, hey, that's my job, not yours. Hopefully you get some value out of that. And speaking of which, if you are a seller, if you are a buyer in the market, or you're just generally interested in what's happening on the market, please go ahead and drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you about that, hear what your thoughts and comments are. Always treasure those from each and every one of you. Thanks so much. All right, that's it guys for this week. Again, my name is Nick Isgro. I'm a realtor with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. As always, I thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. And until next week, see you next time.